All right, welcome back. This is, uh, remember this is Lab 10, and it's called AC RLC Series Circuit. All right, may the Lord be with you. Uh, so this is what the circuit we're going to set up. It's a very simple circuit. Uh, the voltage is coming from capstone, and it's going to be a sinusoidal uh, voltage. And we're going to have um, 5 volts for our maximum value. So it's going to oscillate up and down from 5 to minus 5, back and forth. All right, so we're going to go over here and show you how to set this thing up. And all the components come on this little board here. So down at the bottom, there's three kinds of res four kinds of resistors you can use. And um, we want to get as much current flowing as possible. So we're going to use the lowest um, resistance value, one kilo ohm. There's two one kilo ohms, but we're just going to use one of them. So now imagine I hooked up my power right here. So then current's going to go through the resistor, out that port right there, come up to here and then there's two capacitor values. We're going to go with the small one to begin with. It's a 560 picofarad capacitor and the current would keep going right through here and then it goes up to the top and then we go with the big inductors. You see that big coil of wire? 6.8 millihenries and then we would go out to home. That would be the end of the line. Just like that picture up there. All right. Then in the second trial, we're going to go with the big capacitor and the small inductor. So right now, we're looking at, uh, at those three components, all wired in series. All right. Now, here's how we hook up the power supply. So this is a, a, a BNC coaxial cable with alligator clip leads right there. And before we used it with the Faraday cage, there's a red and a black. But remember, this is sinusoidal, so there isn't really any plus or minus that we have to worry about. So you can hook it up any way you want. So I'm going to hook that one up right there, the beginning of the line. There's plus. The end of the line is up here, like that. And there's little metal tabs they give you that you can bite onto. All right. Now, these three guys right here are the voltage sensors. Now, to keep things organized, we're going to start with the resistor, just like in the, um, just like in the circuit up there. It goes R, C, and L. And L, so we're going to put in the R one first. And these are nice. They just plug right in the back. There's little banana plug ports. Okay, and then here's B. And we plug that right in for the capacitor. And then here's C. And that's the inductor. So super easy hookup. And we're monitoring the voltages across all three devices. A, B, and C. Now, these are smart probes right here. So they hook up all by themselves. So if you go under hardware, you can see A, B, and C have the voltages right there. This is VA, VB, VC, and then down below it's VA, VB, and VC. Now sometimes you get a really weird signal. So if you look on the screen right there, this is the inductor at low frequency. Well, inductors don't work very well at low frequency because the field isn't changing very fast. They they like really fast changing fields. Capacitors love it though. So the capacitor is this orange line right behind the inductor line. You can see how nice and smooth it's behaving perfectly well uh, right there. Then that blue line is a resistor right there is a resistor line and then in the background is the is the voltage source 5 volt, uh, 5 volt voltage source. All right, and um, you can actually clean up like the inductor. If you want to clean up the signal a little bit, you can click on the cog and then go to gain and like set it to 100. But once your frequency starts getting pretty high, you got to come back and fix that because the gain will ruin your signal uh, at higher frequencies. It only works when things are really noisy. Okay, and it smooths things out for you. Now, in addition to this, we need the maximum voltages for all these signals, except for the main signal. The main signal we set ourselves, so it's 5 volts, so we always know it's 5 volts. So over in the data column over here, what we do is we go up to sigma up there. And when you go under sigma, it says it'll give you the min and the max. So we want both of those, and we're going to average them together. And by the way, it takes a bunch of data. So all the way down in the bottom, 
you can see this is for the resistor and you can see that it's not quite the same number and that's because there's a, a little bit of ripple uh, in the resistor at low frequency so you take the minus sign throw it in the garbage can add those two together and average same thing over here this is the capacitor it's working beautifully you can see they're almost identical get rid of the minus sign average and then this is the inductor over here uh, they're a little bit uh, quite uh, not quite different but different and get rid of the minus sign and average all right so those will give, those will give you the maximum the maximum voltage values in both of those things okay uh, now, what about the power supply? It's right over here. So you go to signal generator. We're using output number two, sine wave. I got it set for 7,000 volts. You're going to go from like 1,000 to 60,000 volts, uh, uh, hertz, sorry, S hertz, frequency. All right, five volts all the time. Okay, and that's how you set it right there. You just turn it on, it's on right now. And then go to scope mode. So you see this, this guy right here is scope. So you go up here to the top, uh, right there it says scope. So you double click on that, you get this guy. And when you push that little green star there, you can add four different traces to the same graph. So you can see how, the, all, they, how they all look together. It's a, little bit, it's a little bit wild, but really you're only interested in the numbers in the data table. But you can also see what's going on on the screen. Okay, and then down here, you got to push fast monitor mode and that's how you turn it on so let's go ahead and turn it on and you can see right now only the inductor is lit up so uh, by the way here's what the trigger looks like if we turn it off whoa all right stop there whoa Nelly whoa there we go so the trigger locks in on on the signal so it stabilizes it but still there's a ton of ripple on that uh, inductor and I even increased its gain to 100 and it's still you can at least tell it's sinusoidal though now I can highlight I can stop this and then I can highlight them so you can see all four of them together and then down here you get the min and the max each time change the frequency get the min and the max and so on by the way let me just uh, jump this up to like uh, 25,000 Hertz so you can see what the screen does when I do that so you see how tight it is? Because now you got so many more oscillations per second. So you can pull the x-axis out so you can see just a couple of a couple of waveforms. And then you got to adjust the voltages over here. So what's B? B is um, let's touch B. B's okay. C C's really big. Here we go. So we got to make it, uh, well, it's really not that big. The scale is just so small. All right, let's bring them down. Now notice, see, I, I had the gain on. See how he's cut off on the top? So you got to turn this off. Whenever you see that, you got to monitor it because it's not going to give you the right answer. Then you go back over here and go to C and change the gain back to, zero, uh, back to one. Okay, so you say okay. And we'll come back over here, close this up. And we like to see the signal. And go ahead and push monitor. All right, and everything looks good. I'm going to stop it. Look, everything's sinusoidal again, see? So I got rid of uh, the flat tops. All right, and so you just go over here to get the min and the max, average them out, and you're all set. All set. You can see all the different phase relationships going on. And you're going to see that in multi-sim as well. Okay, so that is how you get the data and then to actually analyze it, make a data table out of it, um, you have to calculate like XL. Now, all three devices follow Ohm's law. So for instance, for the resistor, we got Vmax in the resistor equals Imax times the resistor value. Well, in the inductor, we got the same thing. We got a Vmax in the inductor equals Imax times XL, the resistance of the inductor. Okay, so we have to divide both sides by Imax. And the Imax uh, would actually come from the resistor because remember they're in phase so you would actually do that to get IMAX but you're going to be using um, multi-sim so you can actually use the current sensor we can't do that in capstone all right 
So let me get my clicker here and I'll show you what, um, what the setup looks like. So that's what it looks like right there. You're going to use three oscilloscopes so you can look at uh, this guy over here. This is the inductor. So you're going to look at the inductor and the current together. So you can see the, the Eli. The voltage is 90 degrees ahead of the current. So in this one, this is the capacitor. So the current is 90 degrees ahead of the, of the voltage. So you'll be seeing that in this one. And then over here is a resistor. And you'll see the two together in phase because the current and the voltage in the resistor are in phase. Okay, so you'll notice all these green lines are common because that is your current sensor. This is the voltage across the inductor, voltage across the capacitor, and the voltage across the resistor. And then to get the XL and the XC, all you have to do is take its voltage and divide by the current, take its voltage, divide by the current each time. So you can do a calculated column. Now, the power supply is what we call a signal generator, just like we're using in capstone here. You hook up the negative to common and then a positive right there. Okay, and then you can see I got everything hooked up common. See, common, common, there's your ground. Over here, common, and that's the end of the line over here. All these things are common. All right, and I color coded them, orange, yellow, and over here I've got blue, and here I got gray. So I'm just gonna show you the inductor. So this is what the inductor screen's gonna look like. All right, and if you take these little uh, sliders here, you can move them and then measure the maximum values. And they'll give it to you uh, down below here. You can read those values off. Also, if you look carefully, you can see, like if we go here where the, uh, now remember, this is the inductor, so the voltage is ahead of the current. Eli, voltage is ahead of the current. So the current's right here. You see when it maxes out? All right, it's zero right here. So when the the current is zero. Okay, and then you see in that as you go ahead, then when it's max, then the voltage goes down to zero over here. So the voltage is ahead of the current. I like to look at, this is a really good view right here. So you see V equals zero right here, and then you see the current doesn't appear to be zero until later. Remember, time is going to the right, so this is a later time over here. So you see the voltage is ahead of the current by 90 degrees. You can tell it's 90 degrees, because when that's a max, see that's zero. Beautiful, huh? So you really have a nice look at the signals. Um, when you use multi-SIM. And the nice thing about multi-SIM is you have your current sensor, so you don't have to do the thing like I explained on the board with the resistor uh, determining IMAX. You can just get IMAX directly from each of the oscilloscopes. And by the way, IMAX is the same for all three oscilloscopes because these are in series and the current is in, the current is the same for all objects in series. And that, is the end of the LCR series, AC series circuit. Take care and work hard. We're getting through this. We're gonna get it done. Bye.